So, uh, welcome back. Uh, just before the break, I provided an illustration of a previously built model with parameter variation experiment. And I'd shown there, I had reminded us of the fact that most age based models are stochastic. And if we run a model, many, if, if we run a model with the same assumption, same structure, many times, and those times differ only in the vagaries of the random number of sequence happenstance in the model. Treating a model as a as a random seed, each time running a different random number of seed, we can get variability in results. And uh, I showed some summaries of that for a pre-canned and pre model, um, a model we had looked at very er early on here. And we had some sort of summary measure of the outcome of a scenario, like a cumulative number of infections, or cumulative number of presentations, or average utilization of the clinic. And we saw how that varied across those stochastic occurrences, chance, chance, according to chance events. I also showed how as we change the value of a parameter, that induced variation in results. And we saw a curve which was distinctly nonlinear. For certain values of a parameter, very little variation. We cross a certain threshold as a tipping point. And, and the burden can become very large. And then above that, it's kind of what we call saturated. Um, it, it can't get much worse. People are so overloaded with infection, there are the waiting list for getting treated is so long that that effectively the entire in fact the entire population is is maxed out with infection. And it doesn't matter that much above that, how much contact people are having, it's basically everyone's everyone's maxed up. We saw that. We saw it with a pre-can model. And that was good, but may have been a little bit mysterious. It turns out it's not that hard to engineer this sort of parameter variation experiment in one of your models. And with your lead, dear participants, um, I will now lead you through that exercise. To that end, we're going to be opening a model that we had previously built together. A model that you know well. So we're going to go to any logic here. We're going to close out this model that we've already built. And we're going to load in one of the models that we had previously constructed. And you'll recall we've had quite a a number here, an SIRS um, network model, an asthma model. Uh, um, the screen isn't shared. Oh, thank you, Wade. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and smoking and heart disease. Now, uh, in some of these, we had a chance to explore some more policy-oriented uh, efforts. And particularly the, the network model, we had added some, some policy or some alternative intervention scenarios that, that allowed us to explore them. So we're gonna open up SIRS network model version six. It's a model that we were working on yesterday. So we've opened this model up and I'll reacquaint you, help you enjoy the pleasure once again, if it's acquaintance. So if, if we go to this model and go to person, 
We have the susceptible, latent, infected, and recovered state where often latent is called exposed. Um, and, and this is matches the, the common SEIR sort of characterization. Um, and here, um, we had a set of, of uh, parameter outcomes. And just to remind you, this was a model that involved crowding and crowding-based disparities. We were looking at outcomes involving infection counts um, over this network characterized by marked disparities in income. And you may remember these nonlinear curves, which were elicited and the burdens, differential burdens in amongst those who were low income and from the red here in terms of a histogram of the number of times they've been infected, they had a higher burden than, than those who are medium and, and high income. And this came about due to crowding. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we had here, in order to produce statistics such as that, we had some cumulative measures uh, which we had put into place. So um, we sought to, to count up across the, the population things such as the uh, prevalence of infection uh, or the count cumulative infections across the entire population, et cetera. Mm. Mm. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put in place a means of examining variability in these outcomes at the final time, okay? And uh, we're going to do so using some of these statistics that, that we computed. So what I'm going to do is with this model, I'm gonna call it now version seven, and I'll say with parameter variation, okay? So that's with a sensitivity analysis. And I am going to do new experiment, and I'm going to add a parameter variation experiment, okay? And I'm gonna say stochastic, stochastic parameter variation. And you notice it says copy model time settings from, I'm gonna copy it from the baseline. Okay. My recollection is we're running it to time 7,300, 20 years. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go and look at model time here. And indeed it was just 7,300. So what did I do? I went and I added an experiment, made it a parameter variation experiment. And, and uh, this, critically, the job of this stochastic one is to be run with different random number C. So we want to run it with different vagaries of chance, chance events, happenstance. So we have to go to the randomness area and set it to use a random seed, ladies and gentlemen, a random seed, okay? Mm. Mm. Okay, now, this is a fully equipped, well, this model is capable of being run in this, in this fashion, um, but we have to set it to use uh, a set of replications here, okay? And we're gonna set it to run a hundred times. Now, 
This model is going to run this scenario. We'll run the model with these assumptions about parameter size, connection threshold, infection duration days, all those sort of things. Trans transmission probability per discordant contact. Um, it'll run it again and again and again, 100 times. Now, it is runnable. So if we were to go, go right click on this and choose run, we would find that it would run. and run quite effectively, if not fully like the wind. Um, Wade has raised his hand. Could I make a suggestion? I ended up using replication. Yes, yes, I got a, you could so just send it to the form, form, and, form and, the, and then, you know, and then I'll do it in parallel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was pondering that. And I like that idea because it would speed it up considerably, wouldn't it? And time, ladies and gentlemen, is not on our side. So, and time is of the essence. Uh, so, I'm going to follow the advice um, of the younger generation. And we'll go here to the parameter variation experiment. We will disable replications, which are serialized so that only one can run at a time. And we'll go up to free form and choose 100 as the number of runs. Now, freeform is often used to perform stochastic experiments. For example, I'm not saying you should do this, but you could, for example, in fact, don't, don't do what I'm going to do, but you could say uniform between 0.3 and 0.6 and have a stochastic, have a Monte Carlo simulation experiment where you're drawing values of transmissibility and you're seeing the induced distribution and outcome. This is a distribution from which we're drawing values for transmission probability per discordant contact, and it will induce outcomes, uh, different outcomes. But instead, I'm going to run it with the same scenarios exactly. Okay, here we go. Um, and here we go, run. So I'm going to run it 100 times. Here we go. And Wade's prescience is well illustrated by that graph that's seen by that small construct that's seen over here, where it shows the processors running in parallel in a way that it advances the total number of realization run. It needs to run a hundred times, same assumptions, and it's it's advancing far quicker because they can perform these in parallel. That looks to be what 16 uh hypercores, right? So 16 different simultaneous uh um uh, simultaneous runs. Okay. Um now we've just run it, but we're not really that much further forward because we don't have any summaries of the results. It has run it 100 times no less, but we don't have any effective things to gain from it. Each of those runs was performed. Empires rose and fell, but we didn't emerge with any outcome measures from it. To do that, we need to add some components in. So I'm going to introduce to you a way of doing this with your leap. So make sure this experiment is open. Normally in this boot camp, thus far, we have tended to add things either to the main or to, to main or to, to uh, agent classes. But here, we're actually going to be adding to the experiment. Okay. Um, and uh, what we're going to do here is add in a histogram from the palette to the experiment. So if you go down, you'll find that there's uh, a histogram and we're gonna add in a histogram data object on which that is based. We've added a histogram before to the model. But here, um, this will be 
And, and that was by and large summarizing things over the population. Here we're going to be summarizing it across the across different runs of the model, some cumulative measure. So this is going to be data. And we'll actually have a pair of these um, um, that, that we'll be uh, including here. So we're going to put in place um, a histogram data for a high S high income um we'll call it sorry cumulative cumulative infections this is the histogram data object i dragged it in from the palette from the analysis oh, sorry from the analysis palette indeed cumulative infection uh um among high income cumulative infections among high income histogram data that's the name of this thing. Okay, that's a mouthful. And what's its job in life going to be? It's going to compute. It's going to have values. In it. But we're not going to add these values here. We're going to add them when we get them from each run of the model. So we're not going to put something in the value here. Next, we're going to copy this. We're going to push down control or on a Mac, we do what, Wade? Command. Command. And we're going to drag this. And instead of among high income, guess what we're going to do? Amongst what? Low income. Good. Next, the histogram itself. We're going to write cumulative, cumulative, infections okay and the first histogram data that'll be is cumulative infections it's going to be two of these among low income and we're going to do another one um so this is going to be cumulative infections among low income i prefer amongst but not everyone appreciates that, and amongst high income. It's actually high and middle income, I should really say. High, uh, um, 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 medium and high income, sure. Probably I should say middle. But... And this will be cumulative infections among high, it says high income. Really, I should change this. This should be shouldn't be high it should be middle and high uh, or medium and high whichever you prefer middle and high and and this one will be amongst middle and high okay okay so basically we're going to have this histogram show two so two superimposed histograms cumulative infections among low income and cumulative infections among high income each of which is drawn respectively from low and medium and high here. And I'm gonna compile the model, make sure it's a happy camper. Make sure yours is a happy camper. And if it's not, make a happy camp, make your TA a happy camper by calling a TA to help you. Okay. Okay, anyone online have a question so far? We're, we're a lot of the way done now. Yes, here it is. Zoom in. Sure. Sure. Tell me if this is far enough. Is that okay? I used to sometimes muse about handing out binoculars to all the participants so they could see things in the back. But now we have this extra good pair of binoculars called Zoom that people can, if it's screen shared, they can watch it in the comfort of their of their machines. Um, but I know that requires switching back and forth, which is painful. Okay.
Great. Hey, do, does anyone need a bit more time? Okay. Hearing no demands. We are going to complete the thought. Ladies and gentlemen, work comes in chunks. You undertake a chunk of related work and create a new version of the model in that chunk. Run, test it, make sure it's solid as a new version. Okay, so let's finish these chunks of work, these packets of work. Okay, so to that end, I would like to go now. We are going to initialize these histogram data sets and, and we are going to fill them in. Remember that when we were in main and when running a model, we were populating histograms using data across different, different individuals in the population, different population members, right? The, the histogram would show, oh, there were some people who had very high burden of infection and some with low. That was the purpose of the histogram. Here, the purpose of the histogram will be summarizing variability across what? Across, I said it from this floor. It's, it's summarizing variability across, sorry? Yeah, stochastic realizations. In other words, runs the model with different chance events, different randoms, different random number seeds that give rise to it, different, different sort of uh, just uh, happenstance, okay? So we, we have to accumulate these things across different, um, different runs of the model. Now I'm gonna show you the, the, the heart of the trick, the heart of the matter to empower anyone out there who would like to do this um, going forward. So we wanna go where we haven't previous, we haven't gone before. So in the experiment, in the scenario, this parameter variation experiment, stochastic parameter variation experiment. We want to go and scroll down to the bottom. And there's this area which we where we rarely look called Java actions. Okay. Okay. And before each experiment run. Mm -hmm. We are going to clear these data sets, okay? So I'm going to clear the data sets, these histogram data sets. Does anyone remember how to clear them? We did it once in this very classroom. We, we had a, a histogram on Wednesday, which we, we, um, we cleared it. Do you remember how to do it? If not, I shall show you. So we say cumulative infections, make autocomplete is your friend among low income dot clear. Oh, oh my gosh. I don't know why. I thought it was uh, reset. a reset. Thank you, Wade. Thank you. Thank you. Next, cumulative infections among middle and high income dot reset. Sorry, I do too much ad libs here. Okay, dot reset. So we reset, we clear all the data and we clear out any crop from previous run. Okay. So that's half the battle, but that's the obvious part. The next part is gonna take a wee bit of Appreciation it's, it's, it's requires a little bit more to, to remember it. Okay, so specifically, after each simulation run, you're going to store away the results of that simulation run in these data sets. Now, mind you, I normally do this in a slightly 
different mechanisms. Often, often I have a variable in the model, which I use to store away the cumulative number, and I just read that out. Here, I actually am going to call a population statistic, but I don't see a problem with that. But Wade, I, I don't think there should be. A problem. I don't think there should be a problem either. Um, uh, okay, so after the simulation run, after the model is run, so this this parameter variation experiment is going to run the model many times. In this case, a hundred times, it's going to run it. Each time it runs it, the model will run through its paces, run through its entire time frame. And it will finish. And then we can interrogate it. We can salvage information from it before it disappears. Where you have to bring information out of it, squirrel it away, put it in these data sets, and then we're going to toss away the model results. And so then we, we, we're done with the model results, and we can go on to the next one, and the next run, and the next run and successively save away the information in this histogram data from all those runs. So we, we do cumulative infection on low income histogram data dot add. And what are we going to add to it? Well, if you go look at add, it's looking for a single variable here. And I'm trying to get it to tell us, uh, yeah, okay, fine. So we're gonna add a value. And what is that value? Well, it's going to be, this gives you the key hint here. Root is the name of the high le top level agent. Root dot, what, what, what root? Okay, so root is the name of, root It is the, it's the strange name it gives to name. It's, it's, that's what's just wrong. That's, that's the, the model. Let's just run. And we can inquire in uh, about any, read anything out of that finished model. That's the model when it's finished. So I'm gonna ask for its population. Give me, give me its population. And from the population, I'm gonna use the statistics. Watch this, watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Count cumulative infections who do you think, what should I add in? If I have a data set that needs to record the human infections among low-income individuals, which population statistic would I, would I use here? Count human infections among low-income. Exactly. There you go. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen. We've done that. Okay, next, cumulative infections among middle and high income dot add, and I need to do root dot population dot count cumulative infections among medium and high income. What are these? What are these things that I am calling on population? They are what in population? Why am I calling them on population? Who created them? You, you, dear attendees, you, dear participants, you, dear modelers, created them. What are these things that stand before us? They are, they begin with S, statistics. Indeed, well spoken. They are statistics, ladies and gentlemen. And we can call them on this model that's just finished to get us the requisite information. And that's all we need to do. Oh, all we need to do for that for populating that information. So we're taking information from the model about the number of cumulative in, um, infections from low-income individuals, putting them in here, and then we're taking information from the model uh, among cumulative inf infections among medium and high income and putting them here, and then it gets it gets displayed here. Uh, in the histogram, and this should really say cumulative infection. I'm 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 doing this one here. Histogram. Are we okay with that?
the Greek chorus of ascent is muted, but I'm also not hearing an outright revolt against my suggestion. Okay, so let's build this model in light of that. Okay, and now let's run it. What do you think we'll see? Does anyone want to pause it? What we'll see? We're going to run this model 100 times. Count them. 100 times. And each time we're going to, we, after the model is finished, we're going to read out its cumulative infections among low income individuals, put them in this histogram, um, and separately among high income and put them in a histogram. And it'll display. And what do you expect to see based on the patterns we've seen before? It'll tend to be higher. Do you think they'll have different degrees of variability? Like, will one be fatter than the other, or one be you know wider than the other? To be honest, I'm I'm not fully clear. But let's 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 give it a give it a try. Right here we go. What's it filling in there? What is this summarizing? This is variability across what? Is it across people in the population? No, it's variability across what? Different so stochastic. So same model, same assumptions. We run it multiple times, and sometimes we get ninety-five thousand. Cumulative infections among low income individuals. Sometimes you get 85 thousand, but on average, somewhere around 90,000. And among high income individuals, they're, they're you know, less than half of that on average. Mm -hmm. So there is variability here, but there are regularities here. Systematically, there are marked differences in the cumulative infections in uh, low-income individuals versus high-income individuals, but low-income individuals suffering disproportionately high levels of, of infection. Now, I again remind you that you can always read this out. And if you see fit, you could go and perhaps we even have Excel up, and we do. My hopes are rewarded, and we can paste it in and get summaries. So here we've summarized model outcomes across different realizations, different chance events. Hmm? And we see there is variability, um, but there are some differences here. Um, now, one thing that's not explicated here, good, good, yes, Rachel, exactly. Uh, one thing that's not explicated is, how do we know that, that you know, this one isn't high when this one is low and, and, and vice versa, or, or is it possible both are high together or both are low together? Why don't we look at the difference between the two? That would be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Look at, look at the difference between the two high and mid and low income for a given run, there's gonna be some difference. How, how variable is that? Maybe each of them is variable, but maybe they vary, co-vary. Both are high together, both are low together, and there's great consistency in the difference, or maybe not. Let's go add another histogram data. Okay, here we go. All we do is, is a nice, Easy thing. We we click on this. We hold down Control on PCs or or Command on Macs, and we go and we say um, cumulative um, difference in infection counts between between. I'm tempted to say betweenst but um, low income uh, and um, high, higher income uh, histogram data. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we are. 
cumulative difference in this. And we want to add that in to be displayed in this histogram. Add to it cumulative cumulative difference in. So I'm going to put the title here. Cumulative cumulative difference in infection counts. I could probably name this better. Um, kind of excess infection counts or something. Infection counts um, between low income, low and higher income. I, I don't like that name, but time is short. Um, again, maybe excess income or, or disparity or, or something. And the histogram, what will the histogram be? What's the histogram data object I'm displaying here? Cumul what is it? Cumulative difference. Cumulative difference. That's right. There we are. Hey, cumulative. Oh, cum. Cum. Cumu there we go. Cumulative difference. Okay. That's it. And now... We just have to put in the logic, scroll down, and oh, we no, we got to reset it. Cumulative difference, got to reset that data, got reset. Time to make the donuts. You got to do it in all three. Just prevent old cruft from sticking over, old things that are no longer relevant. Now, having done that, we're going to finish the thought. So after the simulation run, we're going to here put in after simulation run, cumulative difference dot add. And what are we going to add? What's the value we're going to add to the difference? Who can give me a nice formula? Who can give me a formula? Well, it's the what between the two. It's the begins with D. Difference. And so which one is higher? The lower income one. So we're going to take the lower income one minus. All I'm doing is I'm just copying this. There we go. I'm just copying it. So so I'll put it. Don't worry. I'll put it in the chat. I'll put it in the chat. There it is. There it is. There, hey, come on. Get over there. There it is. In bold, no less. Um. Okay. So all we're doing is we're adding to the record of the cumulative difference, the value for low income. We're using the population statistic for low income minus the value for high income. Or for, for medium and high. Higher income. Okay. That's all. Boom, boom, boom. I, I build it. I'm going to run it. And I don't know what, you know, I don't know how variable this is going to be. I suspect maybe less variable than each of those two, but we're going to see. Intuitions are misleading. People are poor at thinking these things through in their head. Models let us play out the logical consequences of our assumptions. Oh, look at that. Looky, looky that. So um, my hypothesis is it might be narrower, that when it's high in one, it's high in the other. When it's low in one, it's low in the other. But in fact, as we change assumptions, or as when with stochastic variability, you can get actually marked differences in the disparities encountered between low and medium and high, um, with sometimes that rising up in some realizations, some runs differing only in stochastics, um, rising up to about 65,000, 70,000. And in other cases, going down to something like 40,000. So this is the difference. I thought it might be smaller variability, but I was wrong. Um, 
It takes a model to be to think this all through consistently, think through the consequences of all the assumptions, recognize the degree of variability, and you can see there's uh, there is a unimodal distribution according, you know, for the uh, for the outcome. But it's not narrower than the others. If anything, it's it's wider than the others. Okay, so we've added stochastic uh, parameter variation experiment. Um, we could add as we change parameter values, but um, that would not be very different at all. And we'd just be reading out the parameter values for each, recording it together with the outcome for each and displaying it. So I'm gonna post this for anyone who wants to explore that more. Um, this hopefully will be a good resource. There we go. Okay, there we go. And um, is this the, no, this is not the right folder, sorry. Uh, models built in class, here we go. And I'm going to upload it. There we go. Boom. There we go. Good. Parameter variation. Capturing it. Capturing variability due to stochastics and capturing variability due to different parameter assumptions. Stochastics for the same parameter assumption, still a lot of variability, including in disparities. Okay. But you notice that actually, very importantly, you notice. I said there's a lot of variability across runs, but one thing that was never challenged, never different, was invariably the case, is that the burden was higher in what than what, and lower than higher. It's just a matter of how much. It was either grievously higher or unbelievably higher, you know, 40,000 versus 65,000. It could differ by a factor of 50% upwards from 40 to you know, something like 60, 65. But one thing that was never, never challenged, one thing that was invariably the case is that the burden fell higher on the lower income. So don't ever believe this nonsense that, you know, you put in, you know, it's just chance, any pattern could come into it. You put in any parameters, you get out and no, 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 there's there are these regularities. There are these things that have to be as a logical consequence of, of the, the way things are, the theory, the natural history of infection, the way the, the health system works in terms of its staging or whatever. There are these things that are invariably true, that are rigorous, um, rigorously uh, regular that are orderly in their results. And there may be variability, but it's not just willy-nilly, who knows, you know, anything goes. No, 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 there's there's great regularity there. It just takes many runs to, to really bring those regularities, ladies and gentlemen, into sharp focus. So with that, those comments, I will stop the